Hey everyone, how's it going? Matt Jarbo here, Three Buck Theater. And I know that today a lot of people out there are reading the early reviews for Zack Snyder's Justice League. This, of course, is coming off of a lot of the uh, social media responses that we were able to get, the quick reactions from over the weekend in the last couple of days. And so far, there were. The response seems to be very, very, very good. I haven't seen it yet. I won't be watching it till the rest of you do on probably Wednesday night or early Thursday morning. Not too sure yet. But there's one thing I wanted to talk about because I wanted to draw attention to a particular review and why under no circumstances should you in any way trust it. And I know this might be going against some kind of journalistic ethics thing, but I don't necessarily care at this moment in time because this review right here Zack Snyder's Justice League is just as bad and twice as long, and it's a review from Darren Franich. Now, I'm not going to go through this review. It's pretty terrible. It's pretty god-awful. It's one that's getting kind of lambasted around the internet, but the reason why you don't want to take this specific interview uh, or review at all in any capacity is because of the writer. The author here is EW author Darren Franich. Now, if you don't know who that is, that's entirely okay. But they, a little over a year ago, came under fire um, because of, well, this incident that was reported on Reddit, where what we found out was that Darren Franich here uh, had, in fact, not watched all of The Witcher before reviewing it, saying here, Entertainment Weekly watched The Witcher till episode two, then skipped ahead to episode five, where they stopped and then spat out a review where they gave the show a zero. And I'm not kidding on that either i'm not i'm not kidding on that at all in fact darren franish did 100 percent uh do this in, in this interview or in this review that came out way back at the end of 2019 um he says here netflix is the witcher is nakedly terrible but i mean look at look at the look at the comparison here right or what is what is the similarities henry cavill stars in both properties so it, it can speak to you know you could say Occam's Razor, simplest explanation being the, the, the truest here, that Darren Franich obviously does not have a thing for Henry Cavill. And look, that's fine. You don't have to like every actor. You don't have to like every, every director or every movie. That's entirely okay. But what we see here is a pattern, a pattern of crapping on things that are, in fact, Henry Cavill related. And in the sake uh, of The Witcher here, the case of The Witcher, um, this guy gives it a zero and he openly admits to not even watching the whole thing. So it makes me really ask myself the question, why is Entertainment Weekly, which considers itself to be a bastion of entertainment journalism and blogging, uh, why is it that they allow this particular terrible, terrible review to make its way to publication? Well, because they want the clicks and the views from the outrage, obviously. And in the case of this review of Justice League, calling it uh, just as bad as a 2017 version, but longer, is again another attempt at just trying to milk the whole anti Zack Snyder movement uh, or, or milk that whole thing for hate clicks and everything else in order to have an objectively terrible opinion, but to come back out and go, no, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. <laughs> because that's what they do. And the truth of the matter is, I think all of us who follow this whole thing from start to finish uh, recognize that this was going to happen. You know, one of the things that was brought to my attention was that a lot of people who re reviewed Zack Snyder's Justice League negatively on Rotten Tomatoes actually gave Wonder Woman 84 a fresh score. Now, again, I haven't seen Zack Snyder's Justice League, so I don't know if I'm going to like it or if I'm going to hate it. It could be either or. I'm leaning towards I'm going to love it based on what I've seen and based on what I know, but that could change. However, when you have people that are attacking Zack Snyder's Justice League, but they're giving Wonder Woman 84 a, a positive fresh rating, it really does not take away from the criticism that there is some kind of anti-Zack Snyder, anti-DCEU bias when it comes to the critics, the access media, and that side of, well, movie making, especially something with Zack Snyder's name in front of it. It's fascinating to look at, to be honest with you, because it's very blatant and it's very much in your face. And these people don't even hide any of, of their hatred. They don't hide any of their any of their or, of their bigotry uh, towards it. And I say bigotry and prejudice, you know, because there is there's a fair amount of it. They hear the name Zack Snyder and they go, oh, 
but it's not Marvel. Uh, well, it's not this. Uh, it's not Wonder Woman. Uh, uh, you know, all of that over the top nonsense. Because they, uh, they, they say stupid things and then they act like, you know, they're the victims when people say, mm -mm -mm -mm. it's not really how this whole thing works. The, my whole point of making this video is really to remind people to just watch it for yourself. All right. The blue check marks were always going to be pitted against this movie because they spent years claiming that it didn't exist. They spent years claiming that it would never happen. They spent years saying, this is a pipe dream. This is not a reality. This is you living in fictional I mean, Neverland. And it's, it's just, you know, you have a, a better shot at dragons coming back than ever seeing the Snyder Cut. Well, the Snyder Cut's here in two days. Yeah, three days, whatever. For some people, it's already come multiple times. There's people I know who have seen it that have bragged about watching it four times so far. So, you know, people are already getting their fill. Although to those people... You may want to hold off and actually watch it on your main account. Help get those numbers up on opening day, just say. But really, the people who, who write these negative reviews, they're the ones that are going to always be against it. But the reality of it is people are more positive for it than they are negative against it in many instances. There have been haters who have now been turned into, I don't want to say fans, but more appreciative. And the fans that were waiting for this have come out and said that it is definitely better. And it's definitely mind-blowing. The people at Entertainment Weekly and other people like that, they're just trying to, you know, mine for clicks and for views and selective outrage, which is unfortunate, but it is always the world that we live in. So I just wanted to put this together real quick, give you guys, uh, you know, a, a bit of talking points amongst your friends if you see this kind of stuff pop up. It is what it is. It's never going to change. Enjoy it. Watch it. And then if you do it enough and if you enjoy it enough and you share it enough and enough other people enjoy it and it becomes profitable, we might get more. So don't listen to the naysayers. Keep moving forward. All right, guys. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you for watching and peace.